Welcome back. Let's talk some football. The bigger pardon, basketball. The influential Somali Religious Council has said that the national women's basketball tournament, which starts today in Somalia, is an Islamic. The privately owned Jawa website was reported what the, the Religious Council said today. It is Somalia's first national female basketball competition with teams from all the five regional administrations, the capital Mogadishu taking part. But the SRC chairman, Sheikh Bashir Ahmed Salat, is quoted as saying that the competition is against Islamic culture. He also says it's not good for men to watch women clad in sports and attire, culturally and religiously, saying that this can cause destruction and suffering. The SRC is run by moderate clerics and preaches against the Islamic Al-Shabaab militants group, which imposes strict rules on women's behavior and dress codes in the areas it rules. Much earlier this year, the council criticized the bill on women's rights with the UN backing, UN backed governments uh, took, which the UN backed government took on board, making amendments. The first basketball game today started in the northeastern town of Garoe with, with a match between Hiroshabili and Mogadishu. However, women in Africa are doing great things in the world of sports. Two of the stars that featured in the recent Women's Africa Cup of Nations have earned moves to new clubs. Nigeria's Francisco Odega has assigned for Australian side Sydney FC for the remainder of the 2016-2017 season. She will now move from the USA's Washington Spirit. Odega helped Nigeria win an eighth continental title in Cameroon. Meanwhile, South Africa's captain, 29-year-old Janine Van Wyk, is on the move to the U.S. as she joins Houston Dash. After reaching 125 caps for the South Africa women's national football team, Janine has become the most capped South African football player of any gender. To other pressing issues on the continent, the United Nations Security Council has reiterated its request that Gambian President Yaya Jame honors the results of the presidential election in which his main opponent, Adama Barrow, was announced winner. The Security Council has already condemned Mr. Jammer's rejection of election results and urged all parties to refrain from violence. The president who took power in a coup in 1994 initially conceded defeat in the December 1st election to little-known challenger Barrow, raising the prospect of an end to the 22 years of his autocratic rule, tainted by allegations of widespread human rights abuses. But in a dramatic reversal that drew international condemnation, he then rejected the voting results and his party is now challenging the outcome at Gambia's Supreme Court. Regional bloc Echoers hopes diplomacy can persuade Jammer to step down, but it's warned him it will take all necessary actions to resolve the impasse. Meanwhile, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime has made some startling revelations, saying children make up almost a third of all human trafficking victims worldwide. This is reported in its third of, in the third of its kind, mandated by the General Assembly through the 2010 United Nations Global Plan of Action to Combat Trafficking in Persons. In a report released by the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, children make up to a third of all human trafficking victims worldwide. Additionally, women and girls comprise 71% of human trafficking victims. Report shows that while children and girls are pushed into marriage and sexual slavery, men and boys are forced into labor in the mining sector as porters, soldiers and slaves. While 28% of trafficking victims worldwide are children in regions such as Sub-Saharan Africa and Central America and the Caribbean, children comprise 62 and 64% of victims. This year's report includes a thematic chapter focusing on the connection between trafficking of persons, migration and conflict. Trafficking persons is happening everywhere. And actually the... Tra Victims who are trafficked, they could be anybody. They could be women, they could be children, they could be men and uh, uh, girls and boys. The report also noted that arms group can by themselves create trafficking in persons. This brings me to the point that I'm absolutely sure that every single person in this room has seen a trafficking in persons victim. Actually, it is not happening somewhere there. 
it's happening here, and we are all involved in trafficking in persons. Data includes the reports revealed by trafficking in person and regular migration flows broadly resemble each other from some destination countries to different parts of the world. Factors that increase vulnerability to human trafficking during migration process includes the presence of transnational organized crime in the country of origin and the person's social economic profile. Displaced civilians who sought refuge near Bongi's Mpoko Airport in the Central African Republic in 2013 are returning home following plans by President Forcing Ashange to Terra to evacuate the airport. The CR descended into chaos when mainly Muslims led rebels seized power in the majority Christian nation, ousting then President Francois Bozis and sparking a backlash from Christian anti Balaka militia. Thousands of people displaced by conflict in the Central African Republic are beginning to return home three years after they descended on the Poco camp for the displaced next to the airport in Bangui. Makeshift houses came down and the displaced carried the materials home after the country's new president announced a plan to evacuate the airport and have those living there return home for Christmas. In addition to this return activity, we put in place a tracking sheet by sector, district and neighborhood. So today, my heads of sectors are present to register all the people who will go to the districts and neighborhoods to allow us to go to these people and ensure follow-ups in the returning neighborhoods. Violence in the country displaced about 400,000 people. Among them, Simplice Reuda and his family. I am glad to leave because it is not good here. We have enough problems here. We'll go back to our neighborhood. What the government has done for us is good. Mpoko hosted over 100,000 residents beside the airport runway who were too afraid to return to their homes during years of conflict. French soldiers deployed in the country at the time had a presence in the area, making it relatively safe. The country has been plagued by inter-religious and inter-communal conflict since 2013, when the mainly Muslim Salika rebels seized power, prompting reprisals from the anti-Balaka militia, many of whose fighters are nominally Christian. Elections in February that brought President Tuadera to power were seen as a success. But with no army and few basic services, the government in the capital, Bengui, does not have control over the whole country. That's Network Africa today. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani.